Start off uh, our session today. Welcome uh, everyone to uh, the number nine China Time session uh, organized by the Southeast Asian Cultural Heritage Alliance, Shicha. Uh, we are very honored today to uh, welcome to, uh, you all, to uh, all the organizers, moderator, speaker, and all our audience uh, who are participating in our um, Shicha today. So as you know that uh, this is the number the number nine session. So we have been doing this for one and a half years uh, um, under the, the, the series of talk uh, under the theme uh, building resilience uh, for uh, of cultural and cultural, um, local knowledge and uh, heritage, um, cultural heritage uh, and climate change. Uh, so um, the, the the topic of uh, our CHR session today is about the uh, locating the um, Moli Molivan project in the contemporary Cambodia, uh, presented by uh, Mr. Pakna. Um, I would like also today would like to uh, before we start, I would like to uh, introduce a little bit about CHR uh, about the, the chart time. I was, I'm sorry about, about uh, the um, Southeast Asian Cultural Heritage Alliance. Uh, we are a non uh, um, uh, non-profit and non-government uh, organization established about uh, nearly two years now. Um, we have not uh, officially registered by ASEAN yet, but we are looking forward to our official registration by ASEAN in the coming years. Um, over the past two years, she has uh, have conducted uh, several programs, for example, the Cultural Heritage Man Management Clinic, a project that look into issues of uh, tourism management in uh, a number of cities in Southeast Asia, and our the webinar series called Chart Time. Uh, there are more activities and programs going on. Uh, so, um, what is Chart Time? Uh, what is uh, CHA? Uh, so, um, we are now eight members um, of the non organizations here active in the area of uh, cultural heritage in the uh, region. Uh, we are from Indonesia uh, Heritage um, Trust, the Penang uh, Heritage Trust from uh, Malaysia, uh, Yangon Heritage Trust uh, from Myanmar, uh, the, the Mulberry is from Cambodia, uh, from Laos, um, the Heritage uh, Conservation Society of the Philippines, uh, the Singapore Heritage Society uh, in Singapore, uh, the Siam Society under the Royal Patronage from Thailand, and uh, my center is Center uh, for Research and Promotion of uh, Cultural Heritage in Vietnam. Uh, so uh, as a, a nonprofit organization, a digital-based network of uh, South Asian civil society organizations, CHAS is uh, educated for active engagement in the preservation and safeguarding of cultural heritage across the region. Um, so CHAS has a threefold mission. First is to serve as a forum for robust discourse among heritage, among heritage, um, ASEAN heritage professionals, civil society and community organizations, and interested members of the general public. Uh, the aim is to promote the public awareness of the importance of heritage protection as a vital component of national and regional sustainable development. The second uh, pillar of our threefold mission is to be a think tank and a resource center supporting ASEAN's policy and decision makers in heritage through a variety of activities, including uh, research, analysis, consultation, training, seminars, uh, conferences. So uh, I have listed um, some uh, example, example of our program uh, just now. And uh, so the, the second pillar is to aim to highlight at the key issues in heritage and to serve as a bridge between heritage interest and the goals of people, business and government. And 
the, the number three, Chicha is also geared is uh, activity towards the development of uh, heritage management programs in ASEAN to place cultural heritage at the heart of ASEAN community building efforts and to join hands with governments in uh, bringing about creative solutions to protect heritage sites uh, from damaging commerci commercialization and uh, urbanization as set forth in the Vientiane ASEAN uh, Declaration. So um, uh, for, for you to know that uh, uh, we are working towards a, a regional conference on um, cultural heritage and climate change, uh, hopefully you know, to be commenced in uh, January in uh, 2023 in, uh, in Bangkok, and maybe uh, it's going to be a, a hybrid form of uh, conference, both uh, online and on-site uh, formats. And we are um, confident that we have, you know, thanks to the, uh, this series of talks of the short time, uh, I'm confident that we have a really good uh, collection of topic uh, uh, to speak uh, and to exchange, discuss about the, the issue of uh, climate change and cultural heritage, especially that the, most of the topic was involved, was <clears throat> uh, delivered by, it had been uh, to be delivered by, by, by the young people. Um, so I, I uh, for the talk today, I would like to um, uh, introduce to you our, uh, uh, moderator today, who comes from Vietnam, uh, Dr. Uh, Thieu Minh Tuấn, uh, who, who is an architect from a lecturer from Hanoi University of Architecture. Uh, Dr. Tuấn uh, teach, uh, teaches architectural history and theory as uh, well as studio design subjects. And uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Tuấn has been a, a supervisor and examiner uh, of, of um, um, graduate and postgraduate program in different universities in Vietnam. And uh, this um, topic particularly also uh, attracts the attention of Dr. Tuấn because I think he has a very similar interest in the uh, contemporary uh, architecture and also you know, trying to uh, identify the ad identity and of architecture in the contemporary uh, um, society. So now I would like to, to leave the floor to uh, Dr. Tuấn as a moderator. And I wish the, uh, the uh, presentation would be uh, successful and productive. Thank you very much and welcome to the, uh, the talk. Mr. Tuấn, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's my pleasure to be um, a moderator for the topic for the talk of the Sicha na, number nine. It, um, there, this is very interesting topic about the Van Molivan architects. And um, it's the, my privilege to be a moderator and the, the audience of the, the topic today. So I would like to have a quick intro, um, got a quick introduction about um, the the, the, um, <clears throat> the speaker today, Mr. Pen Serepania. Um, Pen Serepania is a freelance architect and urban researcher, director of the Van Molivan projects. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's a um, Van Molivan project, it's an international team of architects and uh, researcher and student working um, on to document the building of Cambodian prominent architect Van Molivan. Um, Mr. Pania um, <coughs> had been uh, uh, worked for from Phnom Penh Urban Forum and Cambodian Modernist Architecture, had been the subject for seven exhibitions and presentation in Cambodian and selected venue of South Asia, Australia and the United States. Uh, Pania had contributed essay and scholarly journals architecture magazine and the books, including a few uh, prominent uh, book uh, and journal, uh, Doc, Docomomo, ANU, and Ash. Tanya currently participating as scholar and Sai of Spain and South Asia, funded by Getty Foundation, and the recipient of the Hong Kong PhD Fellowship and the University of Hong Kong Presentation Award, where he is pursuing a PhD of architecture and urbanism. And the topic uh, Mr. Pania offered to um, provide today 
it about the work of the Van Molivan uh, architects. <coughs> Van Molivan um, is it, it, um, as I um, as we can see from the the poster before. Um, the Van Molivan project is um, for me very interesting topic about the, the you know, one of the prominent post uh, independent um, architecture of um, Cambodia. And um, the presentation um, of the Pania um, provided today, we discussed on the role of the Van Molivan project in sharing, learning, and the documenting the work of prominent uh, of the architect Van Molivan in contemporary Cambodia. Um, <clears throat> and this, um, this is um, for me that the Van Molivan Van, um, I, um, Van Mulvan, um, architects, it for me, um, it not very, very uh, popular in compare with, um, in compare with the uh, South Asian uh, discourse. But um, when, uh, until I see the, the talk of the, the Mr. Pen uh, Panya today. So I really, really very, very feel interested uh, in the, the topic uh, and very admire of the, uh, and surprising uh, the, 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 the very, the very special work of the um, Cambodian during the, the post uh, independent periods. And um, the Van Mulvan building uh, had been survived after civil war and American bombing and Khmer Rouge, and now have been threatened by the rapid development of uh, Phnom Penh. And the Mary building had been de demolished and making a way of um, commercial development. And um, in 2009, the end, um, <coughs> to encounter this urgent situation, the Van Bolivar Van project, whom um, it a group of researchers and students and, and, um, and researcher had been established to, <coughs> to um, highlight the situation in surveying, drawing, and photographing, and ar archiving, and to raise the awareness of the extraordinary of the work through collaborating and exhibition and lecturing. And this is the, the topic today. Mr. Um, Pen, um, sorry, Panya will provide us. It uh, more focused about the, the value of the architecture of the Mr. Van Bolivan and uh, the situation of the contemporary Cambodian. So um, I would like to introduce the, so Mr. Pen uh, Seren Panya to start the talk today. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Tun, for your generous uh, introductions. Now I start to share my slide. So, um, so uh, today I would like to begin my um, uh, this talk with the thanks to sort of um, Asian Cultural um, Heritage Alliance who invite me for this chat time. It is great to be part of the uh, story. For this presentation, I would like to discuss one more one work in the context of Cambodian modern movement from 1960. 1953 to 1970 that reflects social and political change as well as it responds to Cambodian context, so climate and um, culture. It, is, it also discussed the role of one more one project uh, which I have worked for um, over um, 10 years in sharing learning and document the work of one more one in contemporary Cambodia. Uh, the talk will go through three uh, related sections. Uh, first, um, I would like uh, uh, to um, introduce Cambodian modern architecture after independence from 1953 to 1970, so-called new architecture. This section, I will, I will not focus on how it was designed, but rather it, how it reflects the post-independent regions of social and political reason by its modern identity. And second, I want to talk about one more one, in particular focus on two of his important work. Um, 
One is the um, Olympic National Sport Complex, and the scan is uh, 100 houses. Each building present one architectural topo uh, topology in one model one work. Um, and I choose these two buildings because not only they embed the idea of culture, a foundation in design, but also they respond to Cambodian climate and environment. How can we as new generation of architects learn from these two work in the current uh, challenges of uh, climate change? And so at the end, I uh, will talk about the role of one more one projects in contemporary Cambodia. Why did we start the projects? How do we work? And how we engage with uh, our community uh, to sharing learning and documenting the work of one more one. So um, after 90 years under French colony rule, uh, Cambodia received independence in 1953. Following uh, abdicate the throne, Rodom Sayhanu uh, elected a prime minister in 1955, maintaining one party rule through the political group he found called Sungkum Rin Yum. For scholar uh, Sungkum Rin Yum, or in short term, uh, we call uh, Sungkum. It's a group of Cambodian uh, with a say ideology and uh, tendency for their country. It corresponds to socialism uh, in Western Sen. However, for local uh, people, some of them know the period between 1953 and 1970, which I prefer to talk, which I uh, prefer to use in this talk. In Cambodia redefined itself as a new modern nation by constructing some of the more progressive cultural institutions and spaces in Southeast Asia. The incorrect architectural experimentations, major work of architecture and urban design, implement with the goal of creating an independent and non aligned modern national identity, affirming Cambodian image on the international stage. Those work include a national stadium, theater, exhibition hall, conference hall, university campus, hospital, and housing development projects. The new plan districts also established, and infrastructure, and also uh, uh, many uh, big projects that focus on infrastructure, also create uh, migration from the countryside into the city. As a result, Phnom Penh the ball is surface area in only 10 years. So what is new Khmer architecture? Um, new Khmer architecture is a term that, uh, that was used in Sankum. It often appear in journal, magazines, and book on Cambodia, public in the 19, in the 60 and 70, mostly written in French and um, English Perhaps this term was used to circulate in the diplomatic and scholar cycle. New Khmer architecture also engaged with diverse architects, urbanists, and engineers from Cambodia, Japan, Europe, the former Soviet Union, and the United States. It also um, often appeared in films that produced by the state to showcase of the modern cityscape of independence with New Khmer architecture as a central image. Um, here is a video that um, it, a, a short video around uh, two minutes that I combined two short clips. So the first short, short clip is taken from uh, Monarch University Online Collection under the title Cambodge 1965, made by Prino Dom Sainu, the so new architecture in Phnom Penh City. And second clip produced by the French National Audio Visual Institute. So the set visit of Lee Kuan Yew at the time the Prime Minister of Singapore that uh, come to visit in Cambodia in 1967. So please enjoy uh, the short clip.
head of foreign state visiting given an opportunity to witness the success of Sehno origin through the image of the new Khmer architecture on display. Frequently important visitor brought along the main boulevard where there were many public buildings in the style of new Khmer architecture before being escorted to the Royal Palace, like in the third video of Lee Kong Yu visit that we just see. The team uh, led by a well-known Cambodian architect, Van Mo Luan, who was awarded a scholarship to study architecture at the art school in Paris from 1947 to 1956. After he returned to Cambodia in 1956, he appointed as the head of architects and designed many public buildings, including Olympic National Sport Complex, the Independent Monument, Institute of Foreign Language 100 Houses, among many other. His work well known for adapting a modern vocabulary to Cambodian culture, climate, geography, and ancient architectural traditions. He turned the modern expressions in Western world into a new Cambodian vernacular. For this part, I would like to provide two examples of his work. First is the Olympic National Sport Complex. In 1962, an international team of architects formed to assist one more one to build a new national stadium to, house, to host the Southeast Asian game that never took place. The construction of the stadium took 18 months to finish with an inauguration in 1964. Here is a quote from one more one that I think is captured the design idea of the stadium as well as the city. I quote, Cambodia is a society of half earth, half water, and cities should not be built by landfill, but by incorporating water in their design. Modernity should not be inspired superficially by Western idea that result in destroying all the track of the past. End quote. This quote reflects on two points. First, it so that his design focus on local climate and environments, half earth, half water. Second, it embeds the idea of integrating Cambodian traditional architecture in his uh, modern work. And the Olympic Stadium is a good example of that. This artwork complex divide into three main parts, indoor stadium, outdoor stadium, and swimming pool. It's surrounded by moat and slope earthen grounds. Moat and hill used popularly in Khmer ancient architecture, as was the case in Uncle Wat Temple com complex. Mood construct to provide water for agriculture and protect against the annual flooding. Here was made as a high place that had supernatural power, the place where the Khmer king could communicate with God. The elliptical grounds of the sport complex outdoor stadium construct by using earth to build up the sitting area and for multi-activity area. Also, the stadium hosts a number of national and international events, such as the Gandalf Game in 1966, the Independent Day in 1968, foreign leaders such as um, Yugoslavia, uh, uh, President Joseph Tito in 1968, and the French President Charles de Gaulle in 1966. When he, criti when he criticized American war in Vietnam, among other uh, cultural specta spectacles. The second project that I want to uh, bring up is the 100 houses. In 1965, when Molly Wan was selected by the National Bank of Cambodia for the housing development project on the outskirts of Phnom Penh. 100 identical house built as an alternative urban housing model to the block multi, multiple story apartment, apartment building. This house designed based on 
Cambodian everyday life, uh, Van Molo once said, and I quote, we Cambodian used to living with our feet on the ground. We surround our tower roof house with garden and keep all the equipment for our livelihood, such as cow cat, livestock, etc. under our house, we are built on steel. Around when it's not my house, tree, vegetable, and spine grow, end quote. The 100 houses designed on element of a traditional Khmer house with which to say they are on column to protect flooding with a lot of living space underneath for multiple activity in the family. Rather being made by wood for entire house, the main structure such as column beam wall was wall, um, precast concrete. The span of the column is up to six meter to provide more efficiency and flexibility for the everyday uh, activity in the family. Each house in bed with a bedroom and a light living room that are separate from the kitchen and the toilet by a small terrace. The long roof overhand protect the indoor space from the rain and direct sunlight and the low hot air to get out from the pitch of the roof. Light window and door also provide ventilation for the house. Each house was designed to have one pond for protecting flood, feeding fish, growing vegetable, and cooling down temperature. However, uh, since early 2000, there has been many uh, foreign investment in property uh, with many new constructions. As a result, many public buildings privatized, uh, making way for new commercial building. Most of one more one building like other modern heritage, demolished or completely altered, as you can see in the photo. In the Khmer Rouge period from 1975 to 1979, one more one Akai were destroyed there are only a few number of photo that still survive because he brought with him when he fled Cambodia in 1971. So when the building come down, it will last forever because there would be no record drawing. For this reason in 2009, the one more one project established by a Canadian architect named Bill Grell to document and archive all one more one work that understood of urban development in Cambodia. At the time, we have only two main goals. Firstly, the project work to fill the gap in historic, historical, historic, historical record by surveying the remaining building and generating a database of measure drawing photography written document and physical model in order to reconstruct story of people and places which disappeared because of the decay war and urban development. The Khmer Rouge period is the historical gap in Cambodia, not only had the life of people vanish, but also the urban fabric. Many Cambodian scholars target for execution. After the Khmer Rouge, some of the survivors returned to Cambodia and start to rebuild their country. One more one was one of them. The project filled this gap by bringing the new generation of Cambodia and one more one will come closer. Second point, it acts as an exchange program between the Royal University of Phanya in Phnom Penh and Yale School of Architecture in the US. Over the summer in 2009, a group of architecture students from Yale come to Phnom Penh joined by joined by Cambodian students from the Royal University of Fine Art, whom I was one of them, to work in the project. For over 10 months, we went to the site, survey the building and sketch. Then we come back to the office, put all the data into AutoCAD and produce basic 2D drawing plan elevation sections. After that, we met with one more one for his input and clarification before we finalize the drawing. After produce a drawing, we also did 
model to study the building and for our uh, final exhibition at the Frank Cultural Center in Phnom Penh in 2010. Here are some photos of the exhibition at the time. The project runs once again as a summer school in 2015 that's supported by the US Embassy and Sasa Basa in Phnom Penh collaborate with Pasen the New School. The program carried out as an open studio at Sasa Basa Gallery at the time. Local student, researcher, curator, other professional invited to observe the work in progress and to engage in discussion with the student and architects involved. After the summer 2015, we expand our activity through two main additional mission. First mission is the is um, to raise the profile of one more one work and uh, improve the livelihood of their preservation through training program, conference, lecture, exhibition, and tour. Actively engage with local community and international audience. Second, it foster collaboration between young Cambodian and foreign architects and students, connecting them to this extraordinary example of Cambodian modern heritage and provide the basic archive as uh, educational material for them. So, in 2015, we launched we launch an online archive freely available on our website. Throughout the year, the project has archived significant digital uh, material such as architectural drawing, photography, uh, interview map, written document, and physical model. If the building has gone, but their drawing and uh, uh, story are alive, carrying from one time to another through the project digital archive. This means that researchers, students, and architects have the tool they need to learn to share and be inspired by that heritage. So in 2017, we also extend our scope of work of collaboration with local partners to organize city events and festival that make dialogue about the challenges in the, um, the contemporary city. Our first event was to organize Sensing the City. It was an architecture and art event that focused on Phnom Penh. In the program, there were events such as architectural exhibitions, tour on modern cinema in the 60s and 70s, and talk and workshop. For this event, we collaborate with our partners, Sasa Art Projects, the only artist run space in Phnom Penh with the support by um, Khmer Architecture Tour, Space for Architecture Cambodia, and World Monument Fund. And current is another art and uh, urban festival that we organized in 2019. The festival was to uh, revitalize urban spaces in the city that were neglected, such as um, alleyway in urban block or local close-up. So we picked those places as our venues for exhibition, performance, conference, workshop, film screening, and tour. Throughout the festival that lasts 20 days, there were 28 architects, filmmaker, artists from Cambodia and in Southeast Asian regime participate in the program, spreading through 14 venues across Company City. Besides collaborate with our um, local um, uh, 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 partner. We also collaborate with uh, international partner to organize a new exchange program that, as you can see here, one is the international, pla pla international placement program with the University of New South Wales in Sydney and Cambodian Visiting School with um, Architecture, Architecture Association in London. So um, with that, I would like to finish my presentation for uh, Q&A. Dr. Tun. Thank you, Dr. Chung. Thank you, Mr. Panya. 
uh, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, before my summary about the PIT um, the talk, I would like to invite everybody to uh, put um, your question, uh, to place the question in the Q&A box. So we, on, we, we, um, we are going to, um, to check some, uh, to see whether any, uh, any question. So um, before, before I go with the question and answer, um, I would like to, to summarize um, about the talk of the Panya today. Panya has um, present, uh, present about the Van Mulivan outline of some of the prominent work including um, the, the, the context and the architectural value, uh, architectural uh, design and the, um, the, um, and the building um, um, during the Cambodian, during the post-independent periods. And the second that um, Panya had also introduced about the Van Mulvan project, what, this is the, the current project um, gathered by researcher and student and the work sharing how to promote the, the value of the Van Mulvan architecture. And the topic uh, today, um, for me, it's it very, very, very common and very similar to a lot of um, um, <clears throat> South Asian country. Uh, as I can see from uh, my PhD, and uh, I had um, um, experience with uh, discussion with some of my colleagues. Uh, at, uh, we can see that a lot of similar architecture, modern, modern architecture in Jakarta and uh, the South Vietnam. And I think in, in somehow it did uh, South Asia, it quite similar. And um, Van Molivan work it, uh, I can say that it, uh, from, the, from the project, um, a project uh, by researcher and archive, it really, really interesting work that um, <coughs> Uh, Van Mulivan work it, it more architectural and more uh, had a special way to deal with the culture and climate and new environment. And what the, the pan, pan, Mr. Panya uh, discussing today, it focuses on how, the, how to evaluate the, the Van Mulivan architecture in terms of culture, climate, and new environment. Uh, <clears throat> so, Um, um, now it's, uh, I think it's good time to, um, to start with uh, some discussion. Uh, the first question uh, from uh, Mr. Johan Windodo, Van Molivan was also Roy a book on urbanism like city of sub East. Asian thicker and modern Khmer city, which I think very important for this court and urban study in architecture of city. So it's, are there more of its work and urban design and urban planning? So just in short, um, the Mr. Widodo asking that whether, whether his, his work, um, Van Mulivan work it on urban design or urban planning. Uh, uh, thank you for the, the, the questions. Um, there are one or two more books that uh, one more one publics because, but uh, mostly it focuses on uh, Onko and Simriam because in the 1990s when he uh, come back uh, to Cambodia, he, uh, most of his work, he, uh, he, you know, um, he worked in Simriam because at the time he established um, uh, after authority, and then uh, he also uh, planning uh, similar city. So one of uh, uh, one or two of his book that uh, study of the you know uh, water hydraulic system uh, in Angkor Wat complex uh, that public by uh, after authority, but I don't really re remember the um, the title of the book. Um, and that. And the other two books that uh, that um, Professor Widodo uh, mentioned 
the uh, the city in Southeast Asia and the modern Khmer city also the important book uh, that uh, that he his publics. The last book is his um, dissertations uh, on uh, urban planning uh, in Southeast Asia that he uh, study uh, kind of ancient temple throughout the the Southeast Asia uh, as a lesson lesson for kind of the contemporary design of the city. And that is his dissertation to finish his PhD program uh, for several years ago. And that is, uh, from my understanding, is kind of the last book. Thank you. Um, we have a lot of questions uh, from the audience today and many time for everyone to, uh, to send the question. And we are very sorry that uh, some of the questions could not be answered during, um, during uh, uh, the talk today because of the limit of time. So we forgot on all the of the, um, the question related to the topic of, uh, topic today, and um, the second question, I think very interesting question uh, that very close uh, that Mr. Panya can answer. So uh, from the anonymous uh, attendance, so how does Van Molivan legacy influence the architectural practice of Cambodia today? So I would like to extend to my personal question as well. So I would like to get a similar um, curious uh, question about uh, how the Van Mulivan architecture and building um, influence the, the Cambodia, modern Cambodian, Cambodia today. So uh, thank you for the questions. Um, you know, uh, one more one or always kind of I can say kind of uh, in the heart of every kind of young generation of Cambodian architects. So who, who the one that, you know, uh, the young Cambodian architect uh, in, now can look to. So as you know, uh, one more one building, also one more one himself, um, that he overworked his work always dealing with kind of culture, you know, whatever, uh, what building he designed, he always dealing with culture and climate, for example, water and, you know, uh, earth architecture, something like that. So this is uh, what uh, inspired the young generations. If you look uh, into the young generation that they kind of design the building uh, nowadays, they will see, you know, how their building can incorporate Cambodian culture and can Cambodian, uh, you know, traditional architecture in their work, and how their, you know, building can dealing with kind of climate, you know, heat, uh, uh, wind, air, uh, light, and this is kind of all the element that you know uh, uh, embed in uh, one more than architecture, and this is kind of the element that uh, the young generation right now study from. Uh, one more one architecture. Thank you. Um, another another question, uh, another comment from the um, another Vietnamese audience. Hi, oh, thank you for pen for presentation. I'm the fan of Van Mulivan. And could you please talk more about the indoor stadium? So it was impressed structure flying concrete. And um, I, I, I would like to ask my personal um, thing as well. Um, my, my personal question that um, in compare with a lot of uh, architectural monument in around Southeast Asia. So um, I think that um, the Van Mulivan it, uh, building architecture, architecture and building appear at the special political moment uh, with um, um, during the, um, the uh, post independent periods and this is very prominent building but however however I got a feeling that uh, Van Mulivan architecture beyond political issue and his um, his building can live for for, for longer and a lot of young architect and young Cambodian can learn a lot from the way Van Mulivan uh, reconsidered the, the traditional culture, climate and environment. 
And this is the same with uh, Mr. Tuan, Mr. Tuan um, uh, from Vietnam. He would like uh, the um, Tanya to talk further about the indoor stadium, about flying concrete. Mm -hmm. And so this is how you learning from your Van Mulvan project. project. So uh, it's the uh, kind of what it made that kind of, for me, kind of capture the whole design of you know the stadium. So I uh, will talk. We answer the uh, um, the question that relate to kind of indoor stadium. As you can see uh, here, uh, you can see the indoor stadium. Um, so basically, um, so basically, you can see the the roof. So there are four roofs. So the whole uh, building are composed by four roofs. So each roof, they have their own support. That you can see one column in the middle. So from one column to another, the spending of the column is 32 meter. Uh, so it's like, you know, uh, the mushroom, right? Because, you know, the, the design of the structure like mushroom, one column and support, support a very kind of big roof. Um, and, so the roof itself, half of the roof, you can cover uh, inside of the inside of the hall, and the other half cover kind of outside of the hall uh, for another sitting that outside the hall, pass to the outdoor stadium. And the the stadium, uh, in a way, there is like. Um, uh, uh, the building that, that no wall, if you can see, um, I, if you can see the image uh, below. Basically, it's formed by only beams and sitting uh, 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 platforms, columns, and the roof. It's like uh, kind of no wall at all that allow kind of light and, and ventilation can go across uh, the whole buildings. Um, and also, if you do a section of the stadium uh, here, you can see the comparison between two. Uh, one is Uncle Wat Temple, and one is you know the stadium, as one more one mentioned in 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 his quote. It basically the system of the design, the planning is based on uh, Uncle Wat Temple that you can have kind of water around the stadium, provide kind of kind of cooling air to the side and also at the risk war for floodings. And also you can see uh, the stadium itself as kind of the earthwork architecture because he used like half earth and half concrete to build the stadium. And that is kind of, for me, kind of environment friendly. Um, and then if you uh, used to go to the stadium, you can see some element that um, I think is kind of, uh, the element of kind of a Cambodian culture, like you know the the the, the four tower on the stadium, it kind of re, uh, according to Van Mulvan, it represents the uh, the the uh, cosmology is kind of uh, the four direction of the earth, because uh, Cambodian culture basically it comes from uh, uh, India, so you know India basically they kind of uh, they believe that uh, the four direction is kind of um, the, the direction that uh, create the earth. And this is kind of the, a little bit meaning to the four tower uh, on top of the stadium that it kind of a little bit uh, kind of relate into uh, Cambodian uh, culture story. Um, I don't know if this is kind of the, uh, the answer uh, to the question or not. Um. Thank you. So, um, uh, <clears throat> this is, um, I think um, a lot of um, uh, audience now interested in um, had um, uh, interested in in the um, Van Mulivan um, architecture and the way he deal with the concrete and the modern architecture, modern language of architecture, and the way he deal with uh, the cultural and the environment. So I think um, for for further for the answer from the Pena, 
and case and also what I see from the some of the YouTube video about the Van Mulivan uh, work. So he can I, I would say that uh, Van Mulivan sometimes he 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 follow the um, try to combine the modern and the traditional of the Khmer into the building in modern way. And to somehow um, I see that um, the Van Mulivan projects um um uh, a lot of researchers and students have modeling and uh, do some photograph and i'm i'm just wondering that uh, any one of the project had been interrogate how the ventilation and this is the um, that's why i pick up another question about the from the an audience named van tien, van tien it's from vietnam uh, he asking that where the ventilation at the van Molivan work it really works. So it's similar to my question that whether any from the project, did you or uh, did uh, the group of researchers had been put, um, examined uh, about the ventilation uh, in uh, some of the key building of the Van Mulivan? Yes. Uh... Yeah. Let me go to so uh so here for example um how and this is uh, how he designed the building you can see uh, this is kind of uh, the central audium um uh, of the national theater that uh, this building already released in 2008 um you can see how he used kind of uh, 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 uh bright in 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 one terms um or you know a uh, kind of uh, uh, the lower to a low light and you know a uh, uh, wind to come in basically his building mostly it kind of open um so according to him you know when he designed the building uh he always um look at the direction of the sun direction of the light he always look at the context, you know, where river, where the city. So when he placed the building, he uh, will, op you know, open the part of the building that allow the light and the ventilation uh, goes through. And this is how he do. And uh, this is how he did for the, uh, his project every time that he did the project. And this is how, you know, the building work every time too. That led to you know climate in Cambodia, and we also studied uh, this um, as we you know uh, the project team uh, uh, work on the project you know from time to time. So basically, uh, the member of the project you know we went to the building to do a survey. Um, when we survey, so we not only you know take the data, but we also you know study the building itself. You know, uh, study by doing. Uh, we study how you know how first of all the stadium a low light and ventilation come in. How we use a uh, 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 lower for the stadium, and we also you know uh, uh, did the model that um, I, I just saw. You know. This is a two model uh, of the Institute of Foreign Language, or we call it IFL. So basically we do, on the left, you can see the section of the building. On the, the right, you can see we do uh, some a small piece of the skin of the building. And this is how we, you know, how the, uh, the member in the team of the one, one more one project study uh, the building of one more one why this building kind of uh, uh, climate friendly, you know environment friendly and how this building can allow you know light and sun go through uh, 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 perfectly uh, so this is kind of uh, what what we did in the projects Jung? thank you mm. uh, i have um, a lot of uh, question 
from the audience. So I'm, I'm trying to pick up um, the, the question close to the focus. And I'm very sorry that some of the questions about the background of the Van Miller, Van Mulivan uh, work and biography, you can find in internet and in YouTube. And the focus of the, of the topic today. So um, we trying to find, um, uh, to pick up the, the question related to, um, to the, the, how, the aspect of the culture and climate and view environment in Van Mulivan work. And um, uh, <clears throat> I got uh, one of the key questions here from uh, Mr. Bridge in University of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, thank, hi, Mr. Penn, thank for the good insight Van Mulivan work in the context of Cambodia. Can you share how Van Mulivan work sustained in legacy of the context of Cambodia, particularly in the present day, addressing the sustainable construction and materials? Uh, you mean uh, how Van Mulivan work uh, uh, still survive in kind of the contemporary uh, city? I think, um, I think that. Um, Mr. Breeze, uh, the Breeze is asking about the sustainable construction and material aspect in Van Mulivan work and how it, uh, it legacy in the context of Cambodia today. Uh, okay, um, I, I try to uh, answer the questions. Um, so uh, basically, you know, um, one more one architecture is famous in terms, you know, of using uh you know earthworks and water right uh so as you know uh, uh earth and water is that very kind of environmental material and that is, is still uh, uh applicable until today so we, we you know we talk a lot about you know a uh, uh, kind of solid uh, material like you know concrete or you know steel um destroy environment right but uh artwork you know, earth and water, it difference, it have environments. That's why, you know, uh, when Moloan's architecture mostly have environment until now, it says why. Uh, and what is the, the second question? Uh, um, I think um, this is a um, quite interesting um, question and, uh, I, I would uh, I would um, see that um, the Van Mulivan it, it influenced by the modern architecture of the post war, especially by Le Corbusier and and some of the the, the key architects uh, from Europe. And Van Mulivan it um, I think he used a lot of uh, concrete and uh, some of the natural and uh, local materials, such as uh, brick, earth. And he talked a lot about the earth and the water of the Khmer culture. And this is the, the, the way he linked and he connects the past and the present into the one. And I think in abstract way and in the modernist way. And this is the, the, the reason why that my, I think the Van Olivan work it, I would say the masterpiece in Southeast Asian context. And um, thank you for the answer from the Panya uh, for the question from, um, from Brits. And another, uh, another question um, from, sorry, anonymous attendee. Is there any strategy and concept inspired the public and social about the design of future architecture? <clears throat> any strategy and concept inspired the public, uh, public and social design the future development of future grandpa Van Muran in terms of geography, in from city and environment and climate concept? Sorry, this is the, the um, I I got um I'm gonna summarize the question about that um how the concept 
um, and strategy from Van Mulvan inspired the public and social, Cambodian public and social about the future architecture and about the development of the future from Beijing city environment and climate? I think uh, it's, it's kind of a good question. Um, so, uh, as mentioned before, uh, when Molo one work always kind of inspired by, you know, from or engage with kind of uh, a local culture and also everyday life and also, you know, a local uh, uh, environment. And this is what, you know, the new generation of architects in Cambodia try to, to, uh, to inspire from. And, and re uh, regarding to, you know, design the city in the future, you know, um, one quote from the beginning, it, it also very inspired me that he said, you know, uh, the city should be uh, incorporated with kind of earth and water, not only, you know, just like, you know, you, you feel to build a new uh, development. And the project should be engaged with a culture, local culture. It's not like you copy from, you know, the Western world and implement it uh, completely. Um, and this kind of quote that, you know, inspired inspire me and also inspire kind of everyone uh, 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 or every new generation of architect to, to thinking about the city. Uh, that, you know, the city uh, should also think about, you know, local climate, local environment, also local culture. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I see I got a lot of uh, another question and so I summarize including my my personal question as well about um, I really really impressed and uh, admire the Van Mulvan work and I, I in compare with a lot of similar South Asian post independent modern architecture it happened in Vietnam Jakarta and some of the other Asian um, South Asian country so but I got a I, I got myself, I, I have uh, watched a few uh, other lecture, um, lecture and video, YouTube video about Van Mulivan. And I can see that um, uh, Van Mulivan uh, uh, heat architecture has a quite different value in terms of politics, social, political um, history, um, uh, and history value, historical value. And some of the, the other way, his architecture and building it um, um, a lot of value in terms of uh, the way uh, the, he deal with the culture and um, um, culture and uh, climate and new environment. So my um, I got I see a few other questions uh, here and my, myself uh, question it how um, the, the outcome. Do you have uh, the, the key criteria or the outcome of the Van Morivan project and how you evaluate uh, what the key point of the Van Morivan value, uh, architecture value? So, I mean, uh, two questions uh, what is the outcome of the Van Morivan project? And the second question is what is the value of Van Morivan work? Huh? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the question. Question is, you know, uh, the one more one project we established because we want to uh, uh, raise awareness of one more one work and also, you know, uh, create more, you know, collaboration uh, between, you know, Cambodians, uh, uh, student and architects, uh, with you know, in, in with the, uh, the foreign student extra. So we that's why we. Uh, we, we have the outcome already, I think, uh, because we create kind of online archive. And this is kind of one outcome uh, since 2015, and we still being digging up that online archive. And those archive is, it kind of, um, kind of, the kind of the basic archive for kind of a Cambodian student or any researcher who want to study more of one more one book, they just, they can just go there and they can cut download, you know, uh, over to the drawing and then they can use that to the drawing for their research or their study as uh, shown in the presentation of, you know, the student use the drawing to build up uh, the model for the school, the student use the drawing to build up 
uh, you know, 3D animation for their school too. Um, and, and, and that is kind of our outcomes. Uh, we want to connect those students to one more, one work more on this point. And also, we also create, um, you know, events like exhibition, lecture, and tour to making awareness of all kind of uh, those work, you know, how amazing of one more one work, work is and how, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, the, how the challenge of the current uh, uh, urban development in, in uh, Phnom Penh is written th those work too. And also, at the same time, we also make kind of a uh, urban festival because we understand that uh, sometimes, you know, uh, urban persuasions uh, is not only, you know, go to the science way. Uh, uh, we a little bit expand to like contemporary uh, issue in the city, you know, that we collaborate with kind of uh, artists or art institute to making, you know, some event or some festival that, uh, you know, already the issue of the current urban development in the city. Thank you. Thank you. So um, uh, for the detailed question that um, if the Van Ruan building, existing building and the legacy had been acknowledged by um, Cambodia scholar or government. There are a lot of uh, acknowledge him, you know, um, because, uh, you know, everyone, you know, uh, uh, admire him, honor him in their own way. Uh, if you, you know, go to Cambodia, you know, you just uh, ask young people, even, you know, other people, you know, who is the, the famous architect, who built an independent monument, right? who's built an uh, Olympic stadium, they just will point out to one more one and they will talk a lot of, you know, uh, amazing about him. And this is, you know, uh, what uh, they honor him. Yeah, thank you. So, um... Uh, another question from the Mr. We Dodo. What happened to Van Molivan archives? It work books and models are therefore important to archive still in Cambodia or well taken care of. Are there important archives still in Cambodia or taken care of? So uh the personal archive of Van Molivan is here uh with his family in Siem Reap because uh, when more one held their own account in Siem Reap because he, he moved to Siem Reap, I think as uh, several years ago. So he had his own account there, it belonged to him. So, and the Akai, the new Akai that uh, created in the one man project is, um, is held by us. So basically, you know, um, uh, all the material, like, you know, two uh, D drawings, um, uh, photography or interview, we uh, put online. You know, as kind of uh, a kind of material for students and teacher, they can download and use it. And for the model, we use for you know uh, 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 exhibitions uh, in Cambodia and on outside of uh, Cambodia. There are some photo I saw that uh, you know saw the exhibition of the model uh, outside Cambodia. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, quite similar question, the same with, uh, with our focus today. Uh, from uh, one question from anonymous attendee, this is, uh, um, this is tragic to see the photo of demolition and intensive renovation. So, is there is there more aspect and protection from it work coming from the government authority? So. Uh... I think uh, um, I can say kind of uh, Cambodia have a long way uh, for that. So in Cambodia right now, we don't have, um, you know, heritage protection law. So most of uh, the, what can I say, the, the program to protect kind of monumental building, uh, it's point to Angkor Wat Temple, like, um, 12th century temple in Simbri. And for the modern building, even, you know, a uh, colony building, we, uh, uh, we don't have kind of uh, the law to protect all those kind of uh, building. So it's very uh, difficult, you know, if you don't have law or 
uh, that you know protect of the building because if if uh, the owner own, own that building, they can you know demolish or they can sell. So um, um, I think I, I got a similar question that um, some of the key building from the Van Mulligan still operates at the, um, uh, I think, and it, it played important role in, uh, in modern Phnom Penh city uh, in terms of the, the cultural practice and the, the every life. I'm, I watched from the YouTube video that, um, for instance, the, the, the National Stadium, that where people gather together and uh, walking um, um, and people gather together and uh, live in uh, play in important role in every life. But some of other building had been demolished. So my, my question is uh, uh, whether the Van Mulligan building is in, uh, how many buildings in uh, a key important, important role in the Phnom Penh today? I think it's, uh, uh, it's good, a very important question because for example, um, as you uh, can see uh, for the uh, uh, Olympic National Stadium. Um, so the stadium is, is not only, you know, uh, the architecture of the building, but it comes to the, you know, the quality is the, the architecture of the city. Um, it's for, you know, every people in the city. So for the stadium, you know, uh, uh, now they become a public space, one of the public, uh, one of the, the, the bigger public space inside the city. That if you go there in early morning or, you know, uh, in the evening at four, five, six o'clock, people are doing exercise, running, um, dancing, uh, selling, you know, food there, uh, people are gathering, uh, talking. So, you know, in a way that uh, the building itself, the stadium itself, it's not only it's not uh, only the architecture of the building, but you know, for the whole city. And that is kind of very significant uh, for, for, uh, for, for the stadium, uh, for the city nowadays. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think um, we have, uh, few other questions that um, about one of the Van Mulivan projects uh, about the 100 house design, 100 house, um, how many people want a single one for the 100 house design for, for example, the four or five. And um, I got my my other, um, I think it relates a question that um, the house is still, it is where the Van Mulivan connect uh, between the past and the modern of the Cambodia housing uh, and the urban form. So uh, I, I just wondering that uh, whether the house, it really, it, uh, how it uh, operates in the modern Phnom Penh. Oh, yes. okay. okay. Um, so the, the question, uh, the first question is, yes, uh, you know, um, 100 houses is uh, is inspired or designed based on you know Khmer traditional houses. Uh, if you look at Khmer traditional houses, mostly in the house there is only one room. We have one room and one big living room at the front of the bedroom. So one bedroom is basically you know uh, for Khmer people is for you know a parent to sleep in inside the bedroom or for you know uh, um, a doctor uh, just inside the bedroom and the rest of the family maybe around I don't know four or five or six just sleep inside the living room so it quite you know it quite convenient for them it's quite flexible for uh, the living room that you know in daytime you can you know uh, invite guests to come and chit and chat there and night time you can convert into a bedroom and sleep there and this is kind of typical of my traditional houses. And that kind of idea that one model one, you know, convert in, into his design of 100 houses. That 100 houses here you see, um, 
you can see only one bedroom and a light living room and one uh, kitchen and also a toilet. So basically, you know, uh, the one the house you can stay up until maybe uh, seven or eight people, I, I guess. So is it a uh, housing still um, still uh, working today? Uh, yes, it is still working. So um, the housing right now is not on. It's not under the government. It uh, under individual. I mean private, because as you know, um, after the Khmer rules, uh, we we are struggling to uh, the government struggling to you know uh, to to planning the city and. Uh, you know, after the commando in the 80s and 90s, people just come back from the countryside, they, you know, pick the building or pick, you know, the house to stay. And 100 houses is kind of the area that people pick the house to stay. And so mostly the people who live in, inside 100 houses, they live there since uh, 1980 and 1990 after, you know, after uh, the civil war. And they own the house right now. I really, really appreciate that uh, the topic is so attractive and very, really <laughs> engaging. That, uh, yeah, you know, you, you, with the, because of limited time, we cannot uh, answer all the questions. So, uh, for those who are interested in, um, in the topic, so please, uh, can you, you can go uh, to um, uh, the Van Water Van Project uh, website and also um, uh, Mr. Uh, um, Mark, uh, will send us an email so that you can uh, contact him in, in person to uh, to try to uh, uh, get the answer uh, our questions answers. So yeah, once again, I, I uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Pagna, uh, Dr. Tun, uh, for a really interesting uh, presentation and discussion, and also uh, the efforts to try to uh, uh, coordinate the uh, the questions. Um, yeah, once again, um, thank you very, on behalf of the Board of Directors of uh, South Asian uh, Cultural Heritage Alliance, I would like to send uh, our thankfulness to all the audience and uh, collaborators across the regions. So um, we look uh, forward to seeing you again in the next uh, session, uh, Chat Time section and other events. So uh, we have a Facebook page, um, uh, C Chai on Facebook page. You can follow the, the, the page and uh, uh, pass on the information to your networks for, uh, for further dissemination. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, attend, attending. And uh, once again, wishing, wishing you good health and uh, all the safety. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.